battery. I think that's the battery. Hello? Hello? Ah. <clears throat> Look, sorry about this. Uh, my name is Sean, and uh, back there is Rebecca, my partner uh, in crime. Hello. Bloody good work earlier. Honestly, I mean it. Delivering us all that data. It's really just too bad that our man on the inside was such a, um, <laughs> uh, how, how, how to put it? Fanatic. Fanatic is the best word, I suppose. We take who we can get. Exactly, exactly. Well put. We saw in John an opportunity to burrow deeper into Abstergo's cloud servers, and I'm not ashamed to say we took it. Uh, not realizing, of course, that he was enlisting you to help him. And to blame, should anything go wrong. I suppose it all worked out very nicely in the end. Most of it, anyway. What Sean really wants to say is, if you're up for more hacking, we are too. John gave you level 3 security clearance before you died. You should use it. The assassins don't have the resources to pay you like the Templars do, but we'll make it worth your while. Ah, uh, look, we should really cut it short, Bex. 20 seconds. All right. Good luck. Cheers, mate. And top-notch work. Really top -notch. Give yourself a pat on the back. And happy hacking. love your job enough to put in the extra time. Don't say that so loud.
Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s, but our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. Initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. 
However, his corruption by the assassin order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop. Researchers looked into the life of Altair Ibn Lahad, hoping to find a biography that might serve as a positive role model for Abstergo's global outreach programs. Unfortunately, this renegade assassin proved to be no such thing. In much of his footage, we see a man gleefully flouting some of his culture's most entrenched taboos with an arrogance that borders on messianic. Altair, no, this is not our way. To burn a man's body is forbidden. Many of our researchers felt that the arguments articulated by Altair's rival, a man known as Abbas, were clearer and more cogent than any we heard from Altair. I recently put in a request that more effort be dedicated to locating one of Abbas's descendants, if any exist. It's clear to us that Altair's transgressions were the primary motivation behind the ultimate dissolution of his despicable order by the middle of the 13th century. We therefore strongly recommend a pass on this property in favor of a more agreeable and inspiring figure from this era.
Timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of reel-to-reel -reel tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14-month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach, a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. Abstergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility for them. And we're live. Capacitators at full. Ease the signal in. A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. He's up. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? Mein Gott. I hear talking. You're... you're okay? Yeah, ja, I hear a stimme. It's... it's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. Keep an eye on our fighters. My name is Miriam Kurz and ich bin eine Navajo. It's Hitler's Zwang. Der macht uns klein. Doch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen? Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die Freiheit der Jugend kämpfe, Navajos. Switch off. Powering down. Kämpf, Navajos. Get per auto there. <lacht> Oxygen. Von der Valve. No. <lacht> no, Satish, I'm, I'm fine, really. Quit the heroics. Just breathe. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It would take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing. It was feeling. Being. I was... I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I, I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this, this poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. Have a seat. Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? <laughs> that would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. <laughs> well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. <laughs> Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate Initiative, test session 23, July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. Your name, say it. My name is Miriam Kurtz. Louder. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am never young. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I've told you all I will. I don't believe that is true. Who has the artifact? Hitler's dictates make us small, and you're bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds will us restrain. Enough. For hard our fists, yes, and knives at our wrists. For you to be free. Now yours lay siege. Now yours lay siege. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm. 
months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Uh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there. And tell her we have some good news. No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. <sighs> Good work, Satish. It's incredible footage, really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry, sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject. Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well, we did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today. A short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using, the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons, ladies. That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just tired. Stop by and see us today. We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you. <laughs> 